what many people don't know is that actually KMD's album, Mr. Hood, is actually named after somebody who is uh, a real life person. Uh, can you um, uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, Mr. Hood from um, Get Yours, KMD. Can you talk uh, a little bit about your earlier interactions and how you first met uh, Sub Rock and Doom? Um, <clears throat> I first met the guards in like uh, seventh grade, uh, middle school. Um, I was a, I was a, a class across from from Doom, and him and another brother from Get Yours named Dre was doing some kind of graffiti on a canvas. And um, it looked really nice and dope. <clears throat> and I saw it from the other classroom across across from them. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, later on that day, on the route going to 7-Eleven in the local LB area, um, I saw them in front of the house working on the same graffiti piece. And, and um, you know, when you, see, when you see graffiti, you stop, you look, colors and stuff like that. And um, that's how we met. I was, I was watching them doing the finishing touches on it. And then um, <clears throat> that's how I met the guard. We just started oh. a conversation. We started a conversation. And we became friends. What do you remember about the creative process uh, of Mr. Hood earlier on before the recording of the album? Um, it was uh, it was very challenging for them because before the Mr. Hood album was born, <clears throat> the first album they was going to come out with was called "By All Means Necessary." Now they had the name Doom had the name "By All Means Necessary." He had the concept of the, the same image of Malcolm X, you know, with the uh, AK-47 whatever in, in the window. And somehow KRS-One, KRS-One came out with the same. Now, this is a, a month before, maybe a month or two before Doom was supposed to drop the album. It was supposed to be uh, either by all means necessary or by any means necessary. But Karis One had came out with it, so this threw everything out of whack. It, 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 so you know, you know how hard it is to come up with a name for something. Sometimes some people could do it easily, but sometimes it takes a lot of work to come up with a name, whether it's a book or album or anything you're trying to do, and to find out that somebody else has your whole concept. <laughs> so this threw everything, this threw everything out of whack. It was like. Uh, they had to go back to the lab and have to think of something else, and 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 then I don't know how long it was, but then they brought to my attention how they're gonna name an album after me, and you know we young and, and doing all kind of stuff, and I didn't really pay too much mind to it, um, <clears throat> but then it came out, but the Mr. Hood album came about because of Karis One having the same name as Doom's first album that was supposed to come out, originally was supposed to come out. Right. Can you uh, give a little background on how the name Mr. Hood came about? Mr. Hood, um, multiple reasons. Um, I'm pretty much everywhere. I be everywhere. You know? <laughs> so, so, kind of like the same thing like Malcolm X. The same thing that he went through. I'm the same things I was doing. Um, but then, you know, they elevated to another level with, with these with these cats. They saw another attribute in me, how I was able to get along with just about anybody, you know? Even, even the heathens and the knuckleheads, and I still was able to get along with them and, you know, stuff like that. So I pretty much got along with everybody. Because it's a combination between the two. That's how I got the name Mr. Hood. Uh, what uh, creative process did you have uh, within that album? What about the skits and uh, some of the creative direction? What involvement did you have with that album? Just my um, my personality and, and you know, 
mostly my personality and the things I did in life. <laughs> you know, they, they based it around that. You know, right. Me, me, me. Like, um, like, uh, as far as detailed stuff, um, having like, you know, written anything or had any kind of thought or anything, I had none to do with that. It was all doom and, and sub rock. Right. And um, they admired me so much, and they, and they, you know, they knew, you know, knew me in that to their own light, and so that's how they came up with that. So, so let me just jump in for one second, because, because you know, he's being very modest of of the explanation. You know what I mean? Wait, I mean, he's on. Obviously, you're on point. Can't nobody tell it better than you, um, but. You know, Moon is like what you would say is like the embodiment of of your neighborhood, right? And what I mean by that is, especially at, at this time we're talking, right, 80s, 90s or whatever, you know, young kids coming outside, there was so many different elements going on in your hood and Moan embodied that. And not to say in a negative way, you know, but we all have different friends and everybody has a different character, let's say, right? Moan was just, he was always that cool dude, the one that got along with everybody, loved to party, liked to hang out, liked music, you know, like like everything that was going on, Moan was a part of. You know what I mean? Like he was the embodiment of what was happening. Like, like, like I think I was telling you off, you know, before. Everybody now, when they say, you know, if 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 eight was a person and they have like a picture of somebody, so it's like if the hood was a person, that's more. You know what I mean? Like, like he just, you know, more was just that dude, man. <laughs> you know, Mister Hood was that guy. Um, and everybody gravitated to him as well, you know what I mean? Because he was just that dude. So now this is my perspective, right? Like for me looking outside on it, the concept came, like like he just said, was based off of his character. And, 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 meaning, and it wasn't like a character, I'm saying a character as far as what the album was, but this was just more on a day-to-day -day basis, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, Moon got down when he had to get down. <laughs> You're right. Coming mm -hmm. up in that time and ever. Um, but Mr. Hood, man, Mr. Hood is, is is one of the nucleus to everything. You know, when it comes to get yours, like, you know, I'm sure you're going to speak about a little bit about that, Moon, but yeah. get yours, you know, very intricate in the whole get yours posse and the get yours family. Um, yeah, man. Mo's that guy. Mr. Hood's that dude. So, yeah, you know, uh, Get Yours. Get Yours started, you know, as having self pride and self, you know what I'm saying, integrity and nothing wanting, wanting nothing but the best, right? Not selling for anything beneath the best. And it also started as like we was a bunch of like uh uh Pepper the Pew slash Heathcliff running around, right? right, right. It, it became like a, a competition with the female, right? <laughs> Pretty much. And um, you know, so everybody's out to get there financially. You know, who could have the baddest chick, and who could dress? You know. But as a team, right? But competitive, you know? Especially when it comes to the female, very competitive. Um, <laughs> then it was like, you know, then there's many different elements. You had the break dancing element. You had the, like the, everything with that's recorded in hip hop. You had the graffiti element. We had a lot of cast that was doing tags and graffiti. We had the break dance. We had the poppers. We had, MCs, we had a little bit of everything, you know, um, the lady getters and stuff like that. 
So all this incorporated into hip hop, you know? And then of course you have education and knowledge, vocabulary, we're very big on vocabulary, and words and knowledge, um, into books and stuff like that. Look at everything. And that's, that's good to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just want to add something to that real quick before you go sincere. Um, so just like he explained how, like what GYP started off as, right? When I got introduced in 88 is when I got down with them. Um, that's what it was. It was all about girls partying, you know, like the other guys in, in, in Long Beach, like when they would see us coming down the block, they would always say, oh, here comes them dancing motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because that's all we, you know, we were just house parties. We were there. Out of town, we that, like we just used to travel looking for parties. We weren't even invited sometimes, right? Morning, we would find parties and kind of <laughs> just crash up in the party. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, going to the city, hitting the clubs up, all like on the weekends, every Friday, right? More, uh, we're in school, Definitely. we're already thinking, like, yo, we're gonna go the tunnel, like, what are we hitting up this weekend, uh, um, right? So that's pretty much how it started. And then I just wanted to put in context is that. Like KMD, right? Start st stood for uh, causing much damage, right? And at some point, it evolved to a good cause in a much damaged society. Right. At the same time, the concept for get jobs, kind of, you know, we were right there with that, and changed, sort of changed the idea of get jobs just being about partying and having fun and getting girls and so forth and try to make it more of a, a more conscious movement. You know what I mean? Like Moan was saying before, getting yours in life, um, just trying to be the best that you can be, you know, get yours, you know what I mean? In a positive way, as best as possible. So, you know, uh, KMD is KMD and then get yours was the whole unit. So like Sub Rock, Doom, that was KMD, but that was Get Yours, you know what I mean, as well. And uh, so as they, Mo, and, and would you agree with me before when we were speaking to Pat and Driz, and I was telling them about how Onyx, Zoom, and Sub would kind of bring back and we would study and do, you know, learn and, uh, you know, through the teachings, right? Right. So we kind of used to look at them almost like bigger brothers, even though we were the same, you know, right there in age. But because they used to go out and gather all this information and come back and share with us, I think in some way we saw them a little bit as our big brother, right? Like when it came to that. You think, right? Am I, am I you know, am I accurate with that uh, from your perspective? Yeah, you, you, you're accurate. And um, the KMD part of the Get Yours was. The hip hop group part of Get Your Life, like Doom and Sub, um, although we all love music and hip hop, they gravitated more being as far as artists, you know. <clears throat> and um, and you write about the whole Get Your part too, right? As simultaneously along KMD converting to a positive energy. Get yours also right up right aligned with it, develop into a positive energy, you know. And um, but yeah, they they you know they had a lot of uh, intellect into scripts, all different kinds of scriptures and theology. And um, and you know when you hang around somebody, you you kind of do some of the same things they do, you know. So. These guys was always into different kind of books. I remember doing, always reading, you know, always um, admiring different type of vocabulary. And that spilled over into everybody, you know. <clears throat> and of course, you know, you have some that are still with the mischief and things has a lot of cats that um, <clears throat> gravitated towards uh, the positive force. And, and high intellect of theology and master of oneself, discipline, stuff like that, you know? But yeah, you, yeah, you hit it right on the nose. Um, but then, you know, 
we had like different, although guitars as a whole, we had different sets. Doom, Sub, and Onyx. That was K and D, but then we had also other big brothers like Med and Oat from Third Base. Um, they were a little bit older than us, you know, and we also looked up to them um, <clears throat> because these was the real um, like B boys, like you know, Med and Oat from, from Third Base. Also, get yours and KMD. It was like it's funny how you, even though they were third base, they would get yours. But they were really fascinating dancers, you know? And the whole B boy and break dancing thing. That's the whole element of, you know, we had we had all that in our crew. We had serious poppers and break dancers. And then we had the MC and then we had the God, you know? But yeah, we hit, we hit it right on the nose. What do you remember most about that uh, album cover shoot? And did life change for you after that? Um, I remember, I remember them telling me about it. I remember them, you know, talking about it and me running around doing the mischief stuff and the hood stuff. And you know, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't really, you know, I didn't really dwell on it. You know, we were friends, but I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't dwell on it. I, I remember me being in school, and they wasn't in school. And they told me about it prior, but it, I was, you know, I forgot about it. And they popped up, at, they popped up when I was in school. They popped up in school. They snatched me out of school. They was like, yo, we got to come, we got to go do this. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm like, I'm still not thinking much of it. I'm like, yeah, I was just, you know, so we get in the limo. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> get in the limo. <laughs> before, before we, you know, we, we hopped in the limo. Like, oh, okay. I'm still not thinking. I'm, you know, I'm still not. I'm just. I'm not thinking about none of that. I'm just glad to see them and hanging out with them. Like you know, what I'm saying, like what we about to get into, you know, you know. And um, we went to Bird. I know we went to Bird King. We had to get some food before we left. We went to Bird King. <laughs> Came out of the drive through the Bird King. We saw some chicks that knew us. They couldn't believe we was in the limo, you know. And we just was like, hey, and then, uh, and then we went to do, the, and then we went to do the shoot. And even then, I didn't think much of it, you know. Um, we doing the shoot and st we doing the, you know, the, the, the pictures and, and stuff like that. And, and, uh, it was a young lady that was like a makeup artist and, and, uh, you know, we do photo shoots and commercials and she got to do makeup, you know, you know, you know, hook guys and we wasn't trying to do nothing. I was like, I ain't gonna put no makeup on me. Like, <laughs> what you needed for the, what you needed for the, uh, Photo, you need it for the photo, you need it for the photo. I'm like, nah, man, I'm gonna damn makeup, man. <laughs> it's the hood. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, you know, we went to, we went to do the, do the, take the pictures and stuff. And, um, and, um, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it went down. That's why I remember that, you know. Right. Uh, and again, it was a female that was doing the makeup. And cause the whole Peppy Pew come out of us again, and Cass is trying to kick it and snap it up and kick it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, that's, that's how I remember that. Uh, it was a very interesting day. I never forget it. Give us your fondest memory of DJ Subrock. Oh man, uh, so many, man. Uh, so many. I remember him correcting me on certain things, you know, particularly of uh, the whole or about coincidence. We need to get into debates about the word coincidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the law says it's done, it's the law's words, no such thing, coincidence, but it's a fine line uh, how to break that down and stuff. We used to debate about that. Um, uh, he was very knowledgeable. He was always, he was always um, teaching me things and, and and pointing out certain things to me. Um, uh, so much, so much stuff. He was so musically inclined, so talented. I remember him. You know, back in the days, you you, you didn't have um, like uh, you know, you could just go on your phone and Shazam something and get a certain tune or. Um, if it's, or you had to listen to the radio and get certain songs. You had to wait for 
a certain time of a, on a Friday night to hear a certain song. We would we would tape it on cassette tape, and I remember him like taking a cassette tape just to get one little sound out of it. He would record it and stop it real quick and record it on the cast deal so he can chop it up. Just the art, so much stuff I remember with him. The, the artwork of making his music, um, his his tag and his graffiti, his wittiness. Um, um, he loved he loved music. You know? And go lastly, all day, man. Yeah. and lastly, give us a fond memory of Doom. Um, <clears throat> Doom just being himself. Um, always always studying. Um, my fond memory of Doom is him sitting on his porch, reading and, and um, writing rhyme. Nice, quiet summer day. You know, Doom, Doom was very laid back, you know. We was all out doing our Heathcliff stuff, and he'd be home just chilling, laid back, you know, um, studying uh, and writing rhyme, you know. Nice, quietly writing rhymes and just chilling, you know, relaxing. That's how I remember doing. Very dope. Yeah. Anything you want to add, Uncle E? Um, well, man, it's so much. I mean, you know what it is? It is hard when you when you say, like, as far as trying to remember memories, because it was so yeah. many. You know what I mean? Like, it, like I said, like I was saying earlier, and, and Moon touched on it just now, when you're in, in the moment, you're not thinking of this is something huge or this is, you know, we appreciate it. We were happy as hell. We always rooted for them. You know, when a song would come out or a video, like I said earlier, we would get happy and excited. Like, oh, shit, that's cool. But, you know, we, 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 we're going to the Spanish store buying heroes and chips and a 40 while all this is happening with them. You know what I mean? And... and, and you know, going back to their house and hanging out. So it, it, it was, you know, this was every day, you know what I mean? So you think about in one single day, the amount of stuff that happened that we would get into, you know, and multiply that by days after days, it was just nonstop, man. There's a lot of great memories, um, you know, watching them make their own hats, you know what I mean? They would get material. Yeah, yeah. And you know those hat like some of those pictures that that are probably floating around where you see them with like these plaid looking hats and they had like the pants to match. It's like they would get the material and sew it themselves and make these hats. You know what I mean? And it would match with the pants. Um, yeah, they were they were very talented, man. Oh my god, they, they, from building skateboard ramps and um, stripping the whole bike down and making it look new, painting it, stuff like that. Making wine, um, and then the, the real stuff. A lot of things I remember too is them being we used to call it a dungeon, <laughs> being you know with the turntables and creating these, creating these, creating these awesome tracks, and the way they would do it, you know, like I said, they they would take a a, a tape deck, and they would um somehow speed the tape deck up a little bit just to loop it through the Casio, right? And then they loop it through the Casio, and then they slow it down or speed it up um, and create a different sound out of it. It was amazing how they did that, you know? And Doom was better at certain things that Sub couldn't do, and Sub was better at some things that Doom couldn't do. And it was like, and they, they they needed each other. And sometimes they used to fight <laughs> because they were so passionate about their music. And of course, you know, everybody got their own idea. You know, everybody got their own way of wanting to do things. And they didn't always agree on everything. And they would get to they would get to <laughs> fight, you know, fist fights. And, and sometimes, I mean, one time I think they broke some part of the equipment. <laughs> they broke some kind of part of the equipment. They got, they got into a fight. And I never forget they got into a fight. and Something broke. And they had to get another one, right? And, and then they they wasn't like they wasn't messing with each other for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sub sub was a master. Sub was, was a master of like trying to get a loop from a, a record. <clears throat> sub was a, a was a master of speeding it up 
and then catching it to be caught it through the Casio. You know what I'm saying? And Doom was a master of like slowing it down and putting everything together. So even though they fought, I remember the times Doom would, would make up with subs because he needed sub on the turntables to, to, to do a certain task for him. <laughs> yeah. And you know, this is this is how the Black Bastard album was born. Because um Sub really didn't Sub really didn't make beats like that. I think it was more Dooms. Sub was more of like turntable DJ type person. And then when they got into this big fight, Sub started making his own beats. And I think I think Sub brought me a lot of blessed to God. Um did a lot of the <laughs> for the Black Bastard album. And that was a, that was a result of the, the, the fight they got into. And you know, they they had different artistic views and, and ways of doing things. But it's, it's fascinating, man. Fascinating stuff. Yeah, that was kind of a funny, you know, they like Mo said, sometimes we would all be hanging out. And man, they would they would just kind of start going at it. And it was like we were like, oh man, here they go. And it would start <laughs> escalating and escalating that like you would forget that they're actually brothers and think that there's just two dudes that this is having a you know a disagreement and an argument. So that's how passionate they both were, um, but but you know, man, that, that that's that was that's what made it so much more, you know, heartfelt and made it so much more meaningful um, because we got to see it, man. We got to see you know the passion firsthand. Uh, right. I just yo know, before we go, two things I just wanted to touch on. Moment, if you can, uh, I was telling them the story about Doomsday. When, when we were in the at Diego in Diego's kitchen arguing about the KRS song and how right, Doom, remember, right, because uh, you right. was one of the ones, it was you was one of the ones that were there that we you know having this debate about the scratches and all of that and then Doom takes that and flips it into the song, right, right, right. and uh, you re you know you remember that from your your perspective, right? Yeah, we we couldn't decide. We the, the uh, argument about was it two turntables or was it one with that scratch? And, right. I, and I keep forgetting. I tell the day I keep forgetting. You know, it's the same. I, I remember what Doom broke it down to us exactly what it was. But it was me and another cat ran away named C Just, and we, we we were walking. Me and C Just was walking, and um, and we were going to one fourteen, and um. We bumped into Doom on the way there. And then we turned around. We went back to Diego House. We went back to D Crib. And we had a discussion then. And then when we got when we got to D Crib, uh, yeah, that's the, that's when you were there. Playing and the we song. Had big old debate. We had this big old debate about yeah. you know, was it two turntables? Was it one turntable? Like yeah, how, yeah. Did they, how did it how Scholar Rock will create this scratch? <laughs> yeah, he broke right, it down. Right, right. He broke it down for us, and, and I, I forgot exactly what he said. And was, uh, I feel bad about that. I forgot exactly what he said, but I still gotta find that out. <laughs> Dude, we were we were we were drinking forties and everything. Having this debate, there's no way I can remember what he <laughs> broke down. But the crazy thing was that he saw how passionate we were debating about this. Ends up taking my tape and using it for the song. It uses yeah. that same part that we all debating about. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, it's just sub, like a, sub was all stuff. Not the country. Sub was also a master barber. You know, he was, he was he can he can draw anything in your head. He's like one of the first to start that back in the days, drawing designs in the back of people's heads. You know, the the clock um the clock Kent the DJ Clark Kent the Superman that he years ago he had a sub cut his hair um search yeah, took sub. superman logo on the hat i think right superman, superman logo sub did that yeah yeah sub also did he he, he did an oe an old english bottle in the back of my head so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I had you on the back of mine yeah yeah he put, a, he put and, an old english bottle yeah. in, in the back of my head is fire you know he did it what, what let me tell you, all kind of stuff. Yo, let me tell you something. I had him do GYP just like it says here, right? And then you see got the dots and everything. 
The one thing I didn't think about was that when your hair starts to grow back, you're not going to really see the dots. And all of a sudden, people are asking me, like, why do you have jit on the back of your head? <laughs> and I'm like, yo, it's supposed to be GYP. But, you know, when your hair is growing back, I didn't, I didn't, like, go back and forth to him to maintain it or whatever. Right. Once the hair started growing back, I was like, okay, I'm done with the lettering. I'm letting it grow back. But you couldn't see the dots in between. Right. Why do you have jit in, in the back of your head? But I'll tell you what, it was fly as hell when I had it fresh. <laughs> yeah. But more also, last thing, the renaming of the street on Hudson, man, to KMD MF Doomway. You know, how'd you feel about that? What's your thoughts, man? How was that whole experience for you? I was awesome, man. I'm still I'm still soaking it in, you know. Yeah, me too, me too. I'm really proud of it, you know. Um the gods earned, we earned it. You know, um, I'm still soaking in. You know, it's a, it's a real milestone, real, you know, a real proud moment. You know, for all of us. You know, you know. And yeah. I'm so I'm so great. I'm so grateful that um, all parties involved was able to were able to uh, pull it off and get, and get it done. You know, I'm so grateful uh, for everyone who. Uh, took part in making that happen. You know? Yeah, man. I mean, who would have thought that the, the corner that we would be hanging out every night, every day, drinking, having fun, snapping, you know, good times, bad yeah. times. Now we get to go by there and see that up there. That's, it's, it's, like you said, I'm still, it's still, you know, you're still soaking it in, man. And we're coming up on a year now. Unfortunately, yeah. dude's passing. Uh, but yeah, man, it's 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 a great thing. It's a great thing to see. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to get your KMD. Well, uh, well thanks for coming on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah finally, thank finally, you. Finally made it, man. <laughs> finally made it. So, yo, I'm gonna say yeah, this too, though, because you don't do interviews, you don't do stuff like this, really. This is where it stops, though. You're not allowed to go on anybody else's platform right now <laughs> until we put this out for a little while. <laughs> yeah, exclusive. You already know. You already know. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you already know. Hold on. I'm just messing with you, man. I'm just messing with you. Hey, it's, been a, it's a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Hood. Likewise. Hope to see you again. Absolutely. Absolutely.